Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back so soon. It's another episode of Ox Fiends, perhaps world first. Uh, two weeks in a row, <laughs> row we record. I'm your co-host, Mateo. Joining here me today is the other co-host, Rashab. Rashab, say hi. Hey, everyone. Hey, Mateo. I'm still sitting here in disbelief that we're recording on another episode of Ox Fiends. What is this? Uh, I, I know. I, I, are pigs flying? Because it's so soon. Uh, you know, <laughs> Diana Ross is so soon in my memory, but uh, I know. Next, next album. We're already but, uh, moving on. Already moving on, I guess. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad, but what we will see. To get into that, um, if you're new to Ox Fiends, what we do here is uh, we alternate picking an album every week. Uh, so this turn, this time it's Rashab's turn to pick. It's his choice. And then so we rec- we listen to the whole album and then basically we just go track by track and just say what we like, what we don't like. Maybe we th- throw around the word uh, interlude here and there, mm-hmm. you know? We've been but, known to uh, do that. Yeah. And, and also, I think it's important to say, too, um, listen before you listen to this podcast, at least be familiar with the artist or, you know, listen to the album that we will be talking about, just so, you know, you'll know where you're actually talking about. But uh, Rashab, they already know what the album is because it's the title. But what, yes. uh, what did we listen to? So... This time, Mateo, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mateo, I think this is the first time we're taking a look at a debut album. Um, I believe this is their first time, at least. Uh, maybe yeah. if our listeners can fact check us on that, I think this is our first debut album. It's a self-titled album. Mateo, we listened to Tyla in her self-debut, self-debut, or sorry, self-titled album, Tyla. Right. Yeah. And this is her debut album. So before we get into that. Uh, I just want to reiterate what Mateo is saying. You know, it definitely, I think, is a more enriching experience if you go ahead and listen to the album first, especially when we're going track by track. It definitely helps to get familiar with the artists. Maybe if you can carve out the time even to hear a few of these songs. Or maybe you'll listen to the podcast first and it'll inspire you to seek out this album. Um, maybe. Or maybe. maybe some other albums, whichever ones we're doing. Um, so definitely, you know, I think, in, in my opinion, it definitely helps to come in with some knowledge of the album when we go track by track here. So feel free to pause at any point and go and listen and come back. Yeah, uh, but with that being said, with that disclaimer done, uh, Mateo, how about we get into the background behind Tyla and her first album here? Yeah, yeah. What do you say? Uh, like, like, what my, like what I thought with your choice? Um, no, I, I, I'll, I'll get there. I think I want to give a little bit of background just on this artist, on this album, um, and just give a little bit of an idea to our listeners who this person is and, and what their inspirations behind the album is. So I'll, I'll start there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So as, as I mentioned before, um, this is a first album for Tyla, Laura Siefel. That's her full name. Um, this is a debut album. This is her first album. And she is basically, uh, she was raised in Johannesburg, uh, South Africa, um, and she started beginning to post original songs and covers to her Instagram account, and then sending some of those songs to various people in the music industry. Uh, She was discovered by her first manager, who kind of helped uh, set up her first recording sessions. And um, this is a person who's relatively young, right? She's a 22-year-old artist, just fresh into this uh, industry for the first time, first time in the music industry, still finding her footing. Uh, But she had several kind of breakout singles. So the first one being, um, I'm scouring the Wikipedia page here. It was in 2019. It was called Getting Late featuring Cool Drink. And this was more of a domestic success, right? So this is something that did well in her home country. Uh, but later on, of course, if you've been anywhere on social media or near the radio, you might have heard of her 2023 single, Water, which entered the top 10 in 16 countries, including the UK and the US. It was the first song by a South African soloist to enter the US Billboard Hot 100 in 55 years. And she was in, awarded the inaugural Grammy Award for Best African Musical Performance in 2024. So she's one album in, she's already got a Grammy. So that gives a little bit of context of where her career is headed. Uh, The single came before her self-titled debut album, the one that we're discussing right now, which was also released and entered the top 25 in six countries, including the United States. So some of the musical influences that Tyla cites are Michael Jackson, Alia, Rihanna, Britney Spears, Drake, Cassie, Thames, and Wizkid. 
She said her first her dream is to become the first global pop star from Africa. So with all that being said, pretend you didn't hear any of that, Mateo. Oh, when okay. I said this <laughs> artist uh, at the end of the last episode, uh, did you have any thoughts? I feel like you didn't. I feel like this was the first time you were hearing about this artist and the first time I mentioned this, uh, what I called an ama piano genre. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I had no thoughts. Like as soon as you had said it, not really any thoughts. I'd never heard of Tyla. You had mentioned water. At that yeah. second, I was not familiar. But then I kind of like, after we had done recording, I didn't listen to it yet. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I wanted to go through the whole album just on once and yeah. have my notes all together. But I, I was like, oh, wait, I think it was this song that I had heard like on TikTok or something right, online. Right, and, right, I, right. And, I, and after listening to this whole album, it was. So I was familiar with that specific song, but I had no clue right. about who Tyla was who or the person what was, yeah. Piano was or, or any of that real, real kind of stuff. And yeah. so I was really just, I, I didn't really have any thought. Yeah, and going into it. Notions. Yeah. Yeah, all, all I knew no was, notions. Yeah, no notions. Yeah, all I knew is you're, you're like, it's a curveball. So I'm like, okay, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it is, you know. But um, I, I'm interested in why, why did you choose Tyla in this specific album, you know? Yeah, that, that's a really valid question. Um, I mean, look, like, I think it's no secret uh, between, at least between me and Mateo, and I think if uh, our listeners have listened long enough, uh, obviously me and Mateo have slightly diverging tastes sometimes. And uh, for me, I know, I, I think I'm speaking correctly for you, Mateo, in that I, I, I'm probably the one of between the two of us who is more likely to listen to what we might call what's on the radio right now. Uh, <laughs> definitely, you know, definitely. Whatever's uh, hitting the billboard charts. and. You know, not everything's good, right? A lot of it is pop slop, as you might call it. But a lot of it is kind of a really good sense of what I guess the world is kind of listening to in the mainstream. And, and occasionally you, you come across things that are surprising and artists that are up and coming. And I and I had listened to Water, right? I mean, I think a lot of us had. And the first few times I heard this song on the radio, and I don't want to bleep too much into our album review, but I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't know who the artist was and it wasn't really a song that I really caught me off guard or had a huge impact on me. But, you know, I think it was just one of those songs that uh, I heard enough times on the radio over and over again that it kind of started to uh, grow on me. I want to say I started noticing it more. I started mm -hmm. listening to it more closely and uh, appreciating several aspects of it. So, when I found out, I guess, uh, about Tyla's uh, background and some of the different things that she's trying to do within the overall pop sphere, I, I started getting interested in her music. When I found out she had a debut album, I kind of scoured some of the songs. Throughout this week, I was actually kind of listening sporadically to some of the songs. Obviously, I did the full sit-down listen uh, before this episode, mm -hmm. or the, through the whole album. But, um, I mean, I think I, it's a good point at this point, I think, to just quickly define Ama Piano. I think we've thrown that term out so often, and we haven't yeah. really made it really well at least in this episode so i'm a piano it's a niguni word i hope i didn't butcher that uh, you know but please correct me if i did it loosely translates to the pianos it's a subgenre of kwaito and house music that emerged in south africa in the mid 2010s mateo it's a very recent movement oh okay this is a new yeah, genre. It, okay it's a new subgenre it's a hybrid of deep house jazz and lounge music characterized by synths and wide percussive bass lines and there's some ambiguity and debate concerning its origins. Uh, people say, you know, there's various accounts of the musical styles in Johannesburg townships. Some people say it's similar to something called Bacardi. So there's a little bit of ambiguity. It's a new kind of subgenre that uh, we might say that Tyla is kind of operating in. But um, yeah, that's kind of the backstory around why I picked it. I I kind of came into it with at this selection with a little bit of context into who she is and songs. So. At this point, I'm honestly, yeah. I'm just really eager to get into this stuff with you and hear your yeah, thoughts, yeah. especially. Uh, I definitely have some thoughts, for Rashad. But but to be clear, so b before you had even, you know, I knew you listened to Water, but was that mm -hmm. her only song you had listened to before you had actually picked? Or were you familiar with, like, other tracks or her, the, the other tracks she yeah. had come out with before the album? So you were. No, yeah, that's a great question. I think I'd heard uh, Truth or Dare, for sure. Um, I think it was a, like a second single or something, and uh, maybe Jump, I want to say, but I'm not sure. I think Truth or Dare and Water, for sh for sure, before I selected. 
uh, more so water than anything. I think that's the one that I think anybody who is listening to this and might know by Tyler would probably know water, uh, if anything. So that's probably the main one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that leaves that as it is then. I, I think we should yeah. jump into, I guess you'd call it the first track. Yeah. The intro. Yeah. The intro, uh, which is called intro. <laughs> yeah. Literally. It's, uh, I mean, not much to say. Uh, I'm like, Rashab, is this an interlude already? You know, uh, but, you know, it's, no, it's an intro. It, it's an intro. It, it's an intro. Like, like obviously, I, I, I'd say that in jest. It's, it's yes. not the interlude. Um, what, what language is this? You know, it's kind of intriguing. No, I don't. It was you intriguing. Know? It's, it's, it's like a, almost like a if, if you go and listen to it, it's like a forty-one second like iPhone voice note type thing. You can tell it's, yeah. it's just behind the scenes of Tyler working in the studio. You hear some chatter in the background. You hear a song playing. Uh, not much more else. it kind of creates an atmosphere that's intriguing for sure it, it captures your attention yeah. a bit i would say i, I guess uh, um i don't want to get too into the weeds because it is literally just an intro but like seconds yeah why, why do you think tyla included this like on the album i mean just to kind of pique your interest like no one's like actually listening to it it's 40 seconds yeah. you know it's just, just to throw it on filler maybe give you kind of a vibe that we're gonna step into because i can kind of see yeah. that but, and, and I think there's some value in going to the weeds here, Mateo, because honestly, it's it's a good question that you've, you've kind of posed here, in my opinion, because, you know, I, I, something I've noticed a lot with pop artists, especially nowadays, is you have so many major artists who kind of include these kind of voice notes or a little bit of a mm -hmm. snippet of them working in the studio. And it's, in my opinion, this intro, I think it, it does a number of interesting things. Number one, I think it creates a good uh, hook for you. You're kind of... You kind of lean in a bit. You're kind of like, oh, this is something new and interesting. There's kind of a vibe to it. I'm going to use that word. There's sort of an atmosphere it creates. Um, and I think it's also just an interesting way that a lot of artists are using uh, to make their record feel more personal. You know, you feel like, you know, this is something personal and you're in the studio with them. I mean, what, what do you think, Mateo? Uh, I think that is very fair. And, and it's because, yeah, I don't want to single just Tyler out. Yeah, we're, you're definitely right yeah. on that. It's, a lot of artists, you know, f through like different genres, but it's, I feel like it's a very yeah, new yeah. thing are doing yeah. this kind of voice notes thing, or they just have like, maybe they're like just talking. And so a lot of times I've seen it in like, as that be the kind of interlude. Yeah. A lot of times you see them like pop and maybe like some rap albums and stuff. And mm -hmm. so I guess, yeah, I, I think you actually really nailed it on the head with it's, it's not just to give a kind of vibe for the album, but it's to, kind of connect try to connect more with the fans it really just feels more personal it's kind of giving uh the listener like a kind of peek behind the you know peek behind the curtain yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think that's yeah. kind of what she was doing and i i guess she i think she you know succeeded with that yeah i but, think so uh, it's not a bad way to start an album i would say i wasn't i wasn't pissed off that she started with this and i'll put it that way you know yeah it's you know, it can't really give too much love or too much hate to right, a literal right. forty second <laughs> intro. <laughs> Voice note, yeah. Yeah, yeah it catches you know. catches your attention and I think that's that's the most we can say about it at this point at least. Yeah. Uh not to get too on the nose, but I think it's safe to say we can move on to the second track. Yes. Safer. Yes. <laughs> First job. Uh go ahead with this one. Yeah, I'm, 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 I guess, not, no pun intended, I'm dipping my toe in the water here about how to approach the first track, because I'm, I want this to kind of set the tone about how I feel about the album, right, in a sense, because I will say one thing, as we get into the first track, even, there's a level of consistency here in the album, it's, it's an overall consistent album, I'll talk about the uh, times where it's not consistent, but in general, there's sort of a homogeny to this album. And I think Safer sets that up. Um, so number one, right off the bat, you know, you hear this kind of what we're, I think, referring to as this Ama Piano South Africa sound off the bat. It's it's immediate from the instrumentation that Tyler's is using. And it's a theme that remains co like completely consistent, I think, throughout the entire album. And I think really what Tyler has done is a mix of that genre plus a very like R&B pop overtone. And I think that continues throughout the entire album. That being said, I think Safer is probably one of the most 
simple, structured songs on the album. It's not my favorite. I'm not saying it's the worst. Um, it kind of feels like a tepid intro to this album. It's maybe not my favorite track. I think it sets up the tone for the album well. You, you kind of get introduced to this uh, space that Tal is working in, which is on the piano plus R&B plus pop, and strong focus, I think, on the pop, ultimately, because I think the overtone of this album is that kind of pop sound, this peppy sound. Um, but Safer kind of sets up this propulsiveness, too, which I think is there throughout this album, uh, which I want to get into more with some of the the further tracks. So for me, Safer is a, a, a tepid intro after the actual intro oh. into, into the title sound. But Mateo, I think I've you know, yapped long enough on this. <laughs> <laughs> I hear your opinion. Yeah, I hear you're yapping, Rashab, but I, I might continue that yap train in the sense that uh, I, I know this is Oxfeeds, but I, I do agree with almost everything you said about Safer. Um, Tyler has a very consistent sound, especially with yeah. all these tracks. Uh, it's it's very consistent, so it definitely sets the scene of what you're going to be listening to the entire time. Uh, yeah. My my actual thoughts on it, though, yeah, like I I did really like the instruments being used. You don't always hear mm -hmm. those kind of things, and it's, you're definitely right uh, about it being with Alma piano stuff. So yeah, straight in takes you and shows you what you're gonna be what you're gonna be hearing. Um, you know, this is my real first time uh, actually listening to like a Tyler, a full Tyler song. And so I, I was like, yeah. oh, she, she does kind of have a good vocal range. Yes, um, definitely. And, and another thing I had noticed too, obviously obviously now, because I was we're talking about, you know, being on a piano, but I was like, oh yeah, this is not like an American styled song, or at least for stuff yeah. I'm used to like listening to. Yes, right? so it's, yes. It's music nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay. Definitely. But it was also interesting because I felt it kind of contrasted with it had a lot of sound that reminded me of kind of 2017 era styled like pop, like American yeah. pop from that, if that makes yeah. any sense. I don't know if that resonates with you, but but it yeah. still had its own distinct sound from uh -huh. the piano stuff, you know? I want to dig deeper, Mateo, because I think in 2024, when you say 2017 pop, it can go one way or the other. Did you feel a sense of nostalgic, uh, like a good nostalgia or sort of like a, this is a shallow, 2017 <laughs> pop song. What, what, what was your thought around it, that? It's difficult because I'm just going to get the cat out of the bag. I, I'm not a, like, a pop fan, at least definitely sure. not pop, new pop. I don't listen to the radio like that. Mm -hmm. I, so I guess I, definitely no nostalgia there for me. It was more of, it kind of okay. reminded me of like a, maybe like a Halsey song or something, kind of from that yeah. era, okay. if that makes yeah. any sense. And so yeah. I'm not, yeah. that, yeah. it wasn't bad. But it's just, okay. it's definitely something. I was like, oh, I feel like I've kind of heard that. But in, uh, again, yeah, in familiar. Context, though, not just on the piano. I, I felt like, for my own listening taste, I, I feel like this song had definitely a kind of cadence that would go along well with like Spanish music or like Spanish speaking like songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we will actually kind of see that. We will later. get into that. We will get into yeah. that. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I, I could completely replace like the English lyrics with just like Spanish ones, like, oh, this would rhythm rhythmically kind of fit Rhythm in, yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like. Absolutely. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. And so it was kind of a whole different clash of, okay, I'm hearing not American style, it's I'm a piano, but it also reminds me of that 2017 pop. But it's like, it also gives me, that's maybe where it kind of gave me my own, maybe good nostalgia, where it's like, oh, okay. Because I yeah. do listen to a lot of Spanish music. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. it was also kind of like Spanish in a way, you know? And so mm -hmm. I thought it was... Mm -hmm. It was kind of it was a nice opener overall, I guess, you know, definitely not the best, yeah. not the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think Ama Piano and maybe, I don't know if this is the right category to put Ama Piano in, but Afrobeat in general is a very rhythmic genre, right? I yeah. think uh, I've heard just enough, I think, uh, music from South Africa to know that, you know, the, the Afrobeat genre is all about rhythm, drums, right? A lot of that instrumentation comes into play, and I think Safer sets that scene. Um, and that continues, in my opinion, to evolve as the album continues. I think Safer is just a, a something that just is an opening, right? Yeah, it definitely gives that, you that little peek in into yeah, the yeah, kind of genre yeah. that it'll dive into. You know? All right, I think we, we are ready to go in out of the safe zone and into the water. Do you oh. agree, Matteo? 
<laughs> uh, we're in the splash zone, Rashab. Smoothest transition oh, ever. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the song, Mateo. We're already on track three, but we're on the song of the album, which is the most popular song. I mean, if you are anywhere alive on TikTok or social media or listen to the radio, pro- chances are you've listened to water. Mateo, why don't you dive us deep into the water with your thoughts first? I'm really curious. Rashab, I don't want to offend you or any of the listeners, but ew. I hate ew. it. Okay. I hate it, Rashab. At least the opener, I hate it. It's <laughs> overplayed. I had heard it. It's overplayed. Yeah. I guess like the verses aren't bad. Mm-hmm. And but like, dude, it just makes me cringe. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't care for it at all. I, it, it was maybe kind of hard to say, but not really at all. We'll really, I don't want to you know go over the whole album yet. But this is my worst song. Like I, okay. I, I hate it. I don't like it. It's not. It's just not for me. Like being on it, it's just not for me. The, the, I guess you know, the, it's not a bad song but it's mm-hmm. just not for me the vocals kind of felt wavy a little watery i don't want to be on the nose what it's called that's pretty on the nose that's pretty on the nose you know i guess it kind of had a good blend <laughs> but like <laughs> rishab i you will not catch me listening to this ever again this song no way i i do okay. not i don't, don't want to hear it again <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like it. I'm so sorry. I, I want to I I I ask you a bit more. I just want to ask: Is it because it's overplayed? Do you think, or do you think you really you feel unbiased in your opinion? I'm just curious. I mean, where, where where do you feel you stand? It's a cop out answer, but it's both. Okay. <laughs> like it, it, I think it's a hundred percent overplayed. Yeah. But also, this yeah. is I'm being I am being unbiased, and this is not my type of song. This is not okay. my like. Uh, it's just not my music I would listen to. I just would sure. not listen to this song, like, ever. I would never put it on or anything. And it, it's, it's almost kind of hard for me to say, because to go back onto that Afrobeat, you definitely hear it in mm-hmm. in this. And mm-hmm. I think the one thing I really noticed, especially with all the instruments, and just the way it's kind of the song goes and everything, I feel like that's... I realized where I made the connection with the Spanish music, is because I, I, you know... I, li- I grew up listening to a lot of like Afro Caribbean music too, right? All that right. As well, and so mm-hmm. I think that's where I kind of made that connection. So I guess it's just disappointing. I guess that it uh, really, really missed the mark for me, where I just felt no connection to it. I, I did not want to listen to it again. You know, Rashad, okay. but I, I, I want to hear uh, what you thought about this because I feel like you might disagree. <laughs> Here's the thing. So we, we named this podcast Ox Fiends because we, we wanted to include that word fiend because we called these fights of ours fiending. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this is a moment of fiending, Mateo. And, and hear me out. Hear me out, okay? I'm Look, hearing. This, I was a little bit confused myself on whether I felt that, you know, where I stood on this track. But right now I want to say it's my favorite track on the album. <laughs> oh my gosh. No way. Yes, and and I have some other contenders that were close, okay? And, okay. You know, I'm 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 feeling mixed about my own choice a little bit, but I want to say, I, I try to remove the fact from my head that this is the big pop single that everybody's listening to. I really try to hone in, you know, on this track. And and look, I can't ignore the fact that I was led to this artist by listening to this song, okay? So I really feel like uh-huh. this is the song that caught my attention, and it continues to catch my attention. I, I think the instrumentation's really dynamic. It's fast-paced, impulsive. I like the way Tyler uses R&B vocals here. It's a confident song, I want to say. It's lyrically confident. Um, yes, it's a pop song, but it also is really, really deep diving into that on the piano uh, subgenre, which I think all of the all of these songs here do. But for me, Water is really representative of this album as a whole and Tyler as an artist, unfortunately, Mateo, I have to say that to you. And I'm cringing as I'm saying that because I know your thoughts on it. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to say, you know, that this is maybe like the pinnacle of her career. I think there's, there's other sounds on this album that I, I think are worth deeping, uh, dive deeping into, right? Uh, 
because there's just other things happening on here, which I think, I, I think Tyler's in a place where she can let her career grow in various directions. But I do think water is, and smells like water are where she feels most comfortable and confident. So for that reason, I have to say, yes, I did enjoy water. And that's why this podcast is called Oxfiends. <laughs> wow. So, so it is, it is your favorite then. I'm gonna say it's my favorite right now. I think there's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick to that because I. I. I want to yeah. call out some of the other ones that I did like. Um, there's other ones where there are maybe more interesting things happening, more experimental things happening. But mm-hmm. for me, water represents Tyla operating in a space and zone where she's excelling. So, you know, throughout, at least from my perspective, Mateo. So yeah. for me, yes, I'm gonna say this is my favorite track, which is the most famous track. What can I say? Okay, I guess that's that's fair. It's your opinion, Rashab. Um, not to fiend too much. I, I will agree, though, that it's definitely Tyla operating in that space she's comfortable with. Yes. You know? Because yes. de- this is definitely more of just... It's just more of a taste of what you're going to get for the whole album. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know? Mm-hmm. So, and I guess that's how it is. Yeah, I agree to disagree, I think. But I mean, I'm curious, I mean, from our listeners, because this is an interesting case where you have a debut artist with such a big single. This might be one of the biggest artists that we've covered on the show thus far. I mean, at least from a perspective of who's popular now. Uh, yeah. So I'd be interested to hear from our listeners in the comments or, uh, you know, wherever, if they think that Water, which is the big pop single, is Tyler at her best, or if maybe they find another gem on this album. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. that's where we are with water. <laughs> yeah, definitely leave it in the comments below, all of our millions of listeners, you know. Yes, all of our millions of listeners. We, we, you know, back-to-back weeks, we're actually uploading. So definitely uh, <laughs> please write something you can, get, you can give us one comment for two episodes, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's two for one special. But uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on from water and go on to yes. truth or dare. Truth or dare, yeah. Uh, uh, you want me to start with you? Instead, no, or? I can save my stuff. Uh, cause I, I okay, like okay. this was a, a blend of the last two tracks, except way yes. more low key. If that makes any low sense. Key. Really? Yeah. Okay. It, felt, it felt more low key. You know, cause I guess it felt the past two songs felt a little more kind of pumpy or poppy. Not that this doesn't feel like poppy or anything. It just, it, yeah. was, it, it just felt more kind of downturn. Um, I don't know. Was it just me? I felt like the mixing was off. It was like a little weird in Truth or Dare. It, it just mm-hmm. kind of s- straight up. It sounded right out of like Garage Band. I don't know. Oh wow! If I'm being honest, it was overall it was just kind of boring. <laughs> Truth or Dare was just pretty boring, and I kind of just wanted it to end. If I'm being honest, I'm surprised. Maybe... I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. No, really? I, I didn't notice the sound mixing. I'm more surprised that you think it's a little more downbeat. I felt it was a, still a pretty propulsive song. It had a good pop sense, strong chorus. Um, I think this is one of the stronger uh, ones on the album that's like more pop oriented. So really? I didn't yeah. think it was downbeat. I'm surprised to hear you. Why did you think it was um, downbeat? May- maybe I'm misspeaking. It-, it felt more low key. That's really what I mean. It felt more yeah. low key. Maybe not downturn and and you know sonically okay. but it, it definitely felt more low key at least compared to the tracks we had just listened to you know beforehand yeah. okay. okay but that's really where i'm I'm kind of coming from you know because I, I felt like it was a definitely a blend of the two but okay. it kind of changed she's changed up a little bit if at least it felt like you know but okay, what, what were your thoughts on truth or dare yeah, in my opinion, I think Water and Truth or Dare, between those two, I think this is Tyla kind of coming into her sound in the way that is the most well put together. I think some of the other tracks on this album, she's going in different directions, maybe going in an extreme in one way or the other. Whereas I think Water and Truth or Dare, all of the kind of genre influences she has kind of come together most coherently, for me at least. So again, that's what I guess what I'm trying to say is between water and truth, they are both of them. I feel they're not her most experimental sounds. They're maybe more of the most um, I don't want to say mainstream or generic, but the place where I think she excels and I think the most coherent sounds um, that kind of bring her influences together in a unique way um, and in a way that feels really cogent. So I enjoyed Truth or Dare. I think it's one of the stronger tracks on here, Mateo. Okay. 
that's, that's I, I did hear the mix thing, but that's an interesting observation. I almost want to go back and almost try to hear for that um, because maybe that's something I missed. Yeah, I, I, there was at least like one other. It was weird because that, that's she. She as an artist has seemed pretty consistent throughout the album, but the mixing, maybe the producers or whatever. At least it was definitely this song. There was like another song that kind of sounded a little weird. Maybe it was just the, like the the, the, the yeah. What's the word? There's one. There's it's one song where I did notice that. Yeah, that it, it yeah. seemed just it seemed a little off. You okay. know, I, I don't. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, there's one song where I feel strongly that there's something a little off. So I'll, I'll get into that. But um, anything else? Uh, Truth or dare? I, into? Yeah, I do. I do want to say actually, it was. I was interesting that you said you feel like this is where she excelled. I I can agree with, though I didn't like the song Water. I can agree. Okay, yeah, she's. This is her her sound. She's excelling yeah. there, and I feel like there is another song where I'm like, okay, oh, she's excelling. But I don't. I don't really feel like Truth or Dare is it though. So I mean, I'm interested in just because you think it's more of kind of the same with Water, or or do you think she'd actually kind of swap anything up? Or... No, I think it's. It, I, I find Water and Truth or Dare a bit similar in terms of musical influences. And here's my argument. I think that it's both tracks are putting together her three main influences. And I'm going to call that, you know, R&B, pop, and I'm a piano slash, I want to say broadly Afrobeat. I know that might be a little bit reductive or I, I think it's to say, but, to you know. Say it's, it's Afrobeat. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. Across those three dimensions, I feel these two songs put those three dimensions together in one package. Whereas the rest of the songs, I feel, are going in one direction or the other. But this one really brings it all together. That's that's kind of my argument for Water gotcha. and Future Dare. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you feel it's more of an amalgamation of the, the, her different genre um, choices. Yeah, influences you know, choosing, and genre choices. Choosing yeah. a single lane. Okay, I can agree with that. Yeah. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Next track, number one, featuring Thames. Uh, Rashad, what did you what did you think about it? Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, not a huge fan of this one. I I felt like oh. it was the beat was getting a little repetitive. And one thing I'll say is I think Tyler is a great vocalist. I think it she shows a lot of range on this album, which honestly I don't know why, but it it did kind of surprise me because if you only hear Water and Truth or Dare, when you hear the rest of the tracks, it's pretty surprising to hear her vocal range. But somehow, I actually enjoyed Tim's vocals more on this. Uh, I found Whoa. them more refreshing on this particular track. And Tim's, by the way, is a Nigerian artist. I don't have a lot of info on her. Probably should have done more research. But for me, this one was a little bit lyrically, musically simple. Almost maybe too simple. Not my, not my favorite, I would say. Not the worst one. But for me, a little bit of a dip in the yeah. energy of the album. But Mateo, it, it kind of seemed like you were disagreeing, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Like uh, a little bit, but like there's that little bit that we're actually kind of agreeing on where now that I'm uh -huh. thinking about it, I'm looking over my notes. I'm like, yeah, it actually is pretty simple because I, I had mm -hmm. written, uh, I don't know if you heard it, unless I had my half my ears off and wasn't listening to the song right. <laughs> a little bit of gu a guitar at the end. And I was like, wait, why did they use that throughout like the whole song? Because I, I really had liked that little part. Okay. And yeah. like, maybe, maybe they're you're cheaping out on you know using all the production and instruments. Maybe. Um, uh, but overall, I guess yeah, it was pretty simple. But I, I felt with this song was actually kind of picking back up. You know, okay. I, you would disagree from Truth or Dare. I feel like this okay. is worth going back to her stuff. Um, I definitely felt that Tyla and Thames had a really good match together. But okay, okay, and I do agree too that actually I, I much preferred Thames in this song over Tyler. Yeah, like, oh, okay, wait, I was vibing to it a little more. Yeah, her voice cadence, I think, I don't know, just maybe it's because we've just been hearing like three, three to four tracks straight up just Tyler. I think mm -hmm. Thames' voice cadence, I, I'll say, did compliment Tyler well, but it, she kind of, I felt Thames kind of stole the show with one verse, one or two verses. So I'm yeah, curious to see think, her discography more. Yeah, I, I um, think it is an interesting point to say where you're like, oh, she kind of stole the verses. Yeah. Where I agree, but also, I, 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 because there's a couple other features on this album, and I don't want to get yes. too into them yet. Yeah. But one thing I noticed with Tyler is she usually she picked 
features that sounded sonically at least very yeah. similar to her own right. sound. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe I just don't know if that's working for her or not. Like I, I obviously, yeah. you know, I guess you both like Thames kind of over her in this song, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. Yeah. If it's your own album, I don't know if you really want that. Yeah, you no, know? you're right. I mean. It's it's one of those things where it's like okay this is this person is going to be an asset to the album but they could also overpower me vocally and I think that happened a little bit with this one but at the same time kudos I think to Tyla for including Thames and uh, as far as I know like she's definitely not an artist that's recognized here in the U S so it's kind of cool to see I mean that this album is done so well like done pretty well at least in the U S and um, you know we're getting to hear from this new artist that I think B and you both kind of she caught our attention with her vocals. So that's, that's kind of cool. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Fair to say. Um, I think it's safe to go on to, uh, the six track, uh, breathe me. Breathe me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I can jump into this. Uh, I, at first, at least I, I thought it was kind of relaxing, mm -hmm. but then it kind of moved into something I didn't super like where it just sounded like a movie credit song for a Marvel <laughs> movie. Oh my that, god. That is not a compliment. Wait, so you think you can put Tyler's Breathe Me after a, a CGI fast like a Marvel movie? Yes. A hundred percent. There there are I could I feel like there's other Marvel movies where like, oh, uh <laughs> they use a very similar sounding song. I was like, wait, is oh it this god. song? Wait, wait, it was like did I already hear this? You know, after uh, some crappy Marvel movie, you know, like and okay. this, this just sounds like that's w exactly where it would go and what it was made for. Wow. Uh, you know, it that's harsh. Yeah, that's harsh. Uh, I'm gonna go on with that harshness where Breathe Me really showed that it's cementing in that these songs aren't for me. <laughs> you know, I uh, sorry to say, Rashad, but it's just these songs are just not for me. I don't like listening to Marvel movie credit songs. You know, <laughs> it just. It, it's hard to say because as an artist, she's doing her thing. Yeah. But it, and she's confident in it, too. And I think mm -hmm. I get why people like it. It's just say it's just not for me, though. It's just not working. Not matching up with your taste. Yeah, it, it just exactly. It's just not matching up with my taste. Got it. And it's just like all her songs, though, are very similar and so it's good for her that she's found her kind of sound yeah but it just does not hit the mark for me and also for the actual song it had like a weird cutoff too to get back to it right at the end okay yeah it, it was weird what, what did you think about breathe me okay here's the thing i think tyla softens up her vocals in this one a lot so i get where you're coming from with the relaxing vibe kind of thing it's it's not more low-key it's actually kind of more evocative, and I think her vocals are coming in. Uh, I don't want to. I'm looking for the right word, but the only one I can think about is it's it's a softer vocal. Um, there's it's it's not necessarily low energy. It's just it's a little bit more, yeah, at, at a lower scale, maybe a softer scale. Yeah. Um, I felt like this is like the most like a typical pop song, but I still liked it. It's one that I might revisit. It's it's one that I would want to kind of look take another look at um, but it's probably structurally the most like a typical pop song i almost i almost want to say it's almost like an ariana grande song it, it kind of mm -hmm. feels like it's uh ready to be heard on the radio though it might be one of the songs on the radio that i might actually kind of like but it is a radio song to an extent mm -hmm. there's a few of those on here but breathe me i don't want to sound too harsh i did kind of like it definitely not as harsh as you but Definitely, I don't know where you're getting this Marvel movie thing from. But. Oh, Rashab, I feel like we're in agreement <laughs> on that. You're saying it's it's like the supposed to be the most poppy, yeah, kind okay, of song like on the radio. Like that's some that to me is the epitome of Marvel movie credit song, where <laughs> a lot, like objectively, yeah, a lot of people do like that. That's why they use those songs. But for sure. me, yeah. it's crap. I don't like it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I get your uh, train of thought. I don't know if. I, I don't know where we would put it in a movie, but I get what you mean. I understand your your mm -hmm. what you're implying, which is that it's 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 typical in some way. And I think the connection you're making is that it's so typical yeah. that you would it would be tagged onto something as you know mainstream and yeah, and that's what it is. It's typical mainstream <laughs> stuff, and Marvel's mainstream. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. But, okay, uh, I mean, uh, a little bit agree to disagree. I think I think it's it's a solid track. Um, is it the best? Uh, I'm not so sure, but it's one I would revisit. So one, one that I would take another look at for sure. Okay, well, I, I feel like you're you would revisit like all of these, at least what what we said so far. But uh, hey, this is my pick. <laughs> Here we are. It is your pick. Uh, and moving on with your pick, I think uh, butterflies, the seventh track. Well, what did you think of it? This is one I, I, okay, so here is where this kind of, there's a split off here. And I'm going to call this the Tyla Ballads. And I think there are three of these. So this is my working theory. I want to hear in a minute how, how much you agree. I think there's three songs on this album where Tyla kind of breaks off from the pop zone, even the Alma Piano zone to an extent, and kind of goes into this, it's, it's still in the R&B space. It's, it's more like a ballad. In a way, it gets more personal. The lyrics are more personal. You know, it's 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 one of those things where it's there is sort of this right now um, trend, I think, in pop music anyway, to be singing ballads. And there's so many mainstream yeah. artists, right, that are doing that. And I think Tyla wants to be in that space or at least uh, have some recognition in that space. And I think Butterflies is a, a one of three series for ballads on this album. But I think it's the worst one. And I'll say that because I think this is the one where I felt the mixing felt off. It was lacking kind of a elevation to it. It la- lacked a little bit of sophistication to it. I also felt like it interrupted the album's overall propulsive vibe that it had going for it. So for me, I almost want to say this is my... Actually, I'm going to say this is my worst track on the album. Whoa! Is that a hot that's, take, Mateo? That's a hot take, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's okay. definitely a hot take. Let's hear it from you. I'm, Whoa, I'm, okay. I'm um, I, I definitely don't think it's the worst song because I think she has a fair amount of songs that are forgettable and okay, okay, bad. If I'm being honest, but I definitely don't think <laughs> it's this. Uh, I to stop the fiending for a second though. I I do agree. It's definitely going towards that ballad kind of sound. She's yeah. definitely trying to go there, and I think she kind of reached it honestly. Um, because okay. to me is I felt like. She had some pretty nice vocals in the song, and it really played off the guitar, and they really played off each other in a good way. Um, th- there was like a weird um, backup vocals. It was like in the post-chorus like part of the song, but it sounded like it was like recorded in an old phone. Did not work for me though. Uh, if I'm being okay. honest, it, it was kind of yucky. If I could, maybe that's too harsh, but I did not like that. Uh, definitely, no, I, I, I get that word. Yeah, it, it, but the overall part of the song it was was not bad. So I'm really surprised that you said it was your least favorite because I, yeah. I feel like if she had cut out those parts, it was be actually pretty good. I don't know, it'd be all right. Um, okay. her lyric was weird though, where it had "boy bye." That was cringe. Uh, I, I didn't <laughs> need that. Um, yeah. but overall, it, it, it's actually really surprising you said ballad because. I didn't write that down. And I didn't think of it, but it's okay. all clicking now where I'm like, oh, after hearing this, I feel like she needs to collab with Joji. And I don't know how much Joji music wow. you listen to. Yeah, but that's I feel an like interesting I feel connection. like they would go really well together. Because when I think of Joji, I'm like, oh yeah, he has a lot of kind of ballads that are kind of like this. Kind of sounding the same song. And so... Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. Are you in disagreement with that? Here's my thought, and, and again, this comes back to my working theory. In my opinion, there's three songs which I categorize as, look, ballad is a loose term, but I'm just using that kind of as an umbrella term. But at the same time, I feel, and I don't know, Mateo, if you disagree, I feel like these slower ballads are not Tyla's strength. I think of the three songs that are, I think are ballads, this is the worst. There's one I think that's the best. I'll get to it uh, eventually, but... I don't think it's her strength. I, I think she needs to develop in this area. And the writing lyrically, too, it's a little shallow still. I, I can mm. see where she's digging into a personal space, but it's it feels a little empty to me still, this ballad area that she tries to work in. So, yeah. whereas I think Joji, I think, is, is an incredible writer of those types of songs. So, I don't see that connection, honestly, if I'm being really blunt. Yes. I think there's... I, I think just there's feel other like, people he could collab with. 
I mean, yeah, other people could collab with. I just feel like at yeah. least vocally and sonically, at least okay. from what I've heard from Tyler in this song, I think they would okay. go well together. If I'm being honest, I, 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 I wouldn't listen to it if they did have a song together. I wouldn't listen to it because of Tyler. I would listen to it because it's mm -hmm. a Joji song. Sure, yeah. But uh, I definitely think any fans of Tyler, you know, should you know open their ears to it. I, I, okay. I think it would okay. work. Maybe I'm a little too crazy for that. No, but I, think, I think they would go well so. together. And especially when you're saying ballad, and she does have kind of other ballad -y ones. But this, is, yeah. to me, is the most obvious. Okay, this is like a ballad song. Sure, yep. After talking about it, you know. But we'll see. Yep. Well, Mateo, I don't want to go on and on about this, but we have to get to on and on. Which is the next <laughs> track. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the transitions are staring me in the face with this one. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Uh, eighth track. I'm sorry. On I'm on. sorry. I'm sorry for it, bringing so much cringe to this episode, guys. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I had enough cringe with uh, some of Tyler's lyrics. I don't need more from you, <laughs> Rob. Mateo, boy, bye. That's all I can say. Right, get out of here, dude. I'm going to hang up and delete this episode now. <laughs> Be the last episode. <laughs> no more cringe. Right. Uh, please, please. Okay, okay, um, I'll stop. Yeah, okay, but for on and on, uh, I guess I can get into it. Um, sure. I think the pre-chorus was the best part for this song. Um, to me, this is also where it sounded the most different. Um, yes, and yes, definitely. It's kind of our running Oxfiends thing, where we say an interlude. Well, I don't technically know if it is i might want to throw my hat and say this is because this to me sonically is the interlude of the album because it it's halfway into the album and it's the first song that i'm like okay this really does sound different than mm -hmm. her other stuff and this is really where she went kind of i think it's safe to say kind of down and trodden with yeah her music mm -hmm. you know yeah and, but i also i think it was interesting because while her, her lyrics were more of what I would maybe think would go with a previous song on this album, kind of, you know, keeping the party going, tango going, right. up and up, it was just, but yeah. the, it was in big contrast with the actual the sound and her vocals mm -hmm. and instrumentation where it was going more downward, you know? Mm -hmm. and so, I don't know, what did you think? I actually have a lot to say about this song in particular. Because honestly, I was between this and water for my best song. And let me tell you why, which is why I get your interlude argument in one mm -hmm. sense. At the same time, I'm almost hesitant to call it the interlude because of how positive I am on this song. And the reason is that I, I it took me time to get into this song. But when I got into it, I really started enjoying it because somehow the lyrics being about this party going on and on and this upbeat, it, it sounds like it should be attached to this pop a beat pop uh, song and it's attached to one of the most minimalistic sounding songs on here. It almost feels like a late night song in a way. I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah, uh, that, that contrast for me really, really worked. Um, and I really found it kind of fascinating and intriguing and it felt complex in a way that I think I didn't really expect from Tyla. Uh, you know, it was some, it was a type of contrast that I would never have expected from an artist who has been so, cogent and consistent sonically throughout the album and to make that switch in an interesting way even if it's lyrically like you know it's it sounds almost like the lyrics are like okay this could be a black eyed piece but somehow setting oh. the black eyed piece lyrics to uh like a downtrodden moody tyla track somehow just worked for me i really like this one honestly okay uh, I, I do want to clarify though rashab i i think and it's not just for this album when I mentioned a song is like the interlude. Just because yeah. it's the interlude doesn't mean it's bad. It, sure, it's just yeah, yeah. it's yeah, obviously some albums have a literal interlude where there's like yes. it's just instrumental and it's like, okay, this is just the break, right? Yes. But to me it also means where it kind of changes the most like sonically and kind of like changing the pace of the album to kind of throw in some new stuff. And that's that's really why I said it. There there is another song where I'm like Oh, maybe this is the interlude, but this is, I think it's safe to say, at least for me, that on and on is. But okay. I don't... Yeah, I can, I would, I can I partially would... agree. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't I'll know. Partially I partially agree. And, and the reason being, like, for me, I don't know, maybe it's a 
mental block of mind. I always feel like interludes are always so throwaway. This song feels like a meaty song to me somehow. So okay. I kind of agree. It's a switch in the tone. So in that sense, I do agree. I mean, yeah. if if I had to come to a consensus, I would agree with you. Let's let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, was there, not to spoil it, but was there another song that you had felt was the interlude of the album? Yeah. Or no? I wanted to say Butterflies, but maybe that's a cop-out because I didn't think it was that good. Yeah, I, so, I think you're maybe associating too much. There possibly. There might be a connotation there that interlude means bad. Yeah. And I definitely yeah, don't mean maybe. it. And I don't think that's what an interlude is. I definitely don't think it's right. ever a throwaway. You know, if there was a throwaway, it would be... Sorry, but the intro. Not on the album, yeah. Oh, the intro, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No, I, I get your argument for on and on. I'm, I'm halfway there. I'd say I'm a little more than halfway there, but yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but yeah I I have to do it. I'm sorry. Can we please jump into the next song? Can we jump into it? <laughs> yeah, please? let's jump in. Hi, Bo, Rashab. Hi, Bo. I had, to, I had to look that up. Did you look it up? I had yeah, to yeah. I, I had seen it because I, I always have the lyrics up and stuff. When listening, yeah. <laughs> and for the listeners that don't know, it's a South African expression to express surprise yes. or shock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, uh, jump more cl- cringe lyrics. Uh, good example. Face card makes them feel weaker. <laughs> I don't like it. Rashab, what it's is Gen this? Gen Z material. You're too it's, old now. Like I, I'm Gen <laughs> Z. I, I am Gen Z, and it's because <laughs> the, the thing is. This is a good point. What you said is it very much feels not just this song, but this is, I feel like maybe the epitome of it where I'm like, she's in that cultural zeitgeist. She's saying all these words people are saying in person and online. It's like, but I just don't like it, you know? And I'm sure if you ever listen to like older music, just because we're not from that generation, we're like, we, we might miss out on those kind of cultural phrases or references but just to see it now with stuff i do know i don't like it i don't like it and that's all i really have to uh, say about jump and jump high ball, also high ball the, indeed. Jump, jump also known as the song where mateo confronts gen z terminology like face card yeah i think i don't yeah. like it i don't like it hey so here's my thing on jump okay uh look it's kind of a pop banger type song. It's 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 made to be a pop banger. It's repetitive lyrics. It's it's a structure that we know. It's a familiar. It's catchy. I'm not gonna get look, it's catchy. It's something that's gonna get radio waves. But is it I can't not say it that it's not generic. It's it's super generic in many ways. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean it, of course there's like, you know, that cool Tyla instrumentation in here and it's a breezy listen, but does it have a lot of weight to it? No, I, I I don't think so, honestly. Yeah. And and honestly, Mateo, I'm gonna jump the gun here into the next part. I kind of feel similar about that one too, to be honest. Yep. Yeah. Big. You, agree. Did you have something uh, to add? Uh, I do for for jump. No, and for art, not really. Uh, very forgettable that art is. Uh, she has nice vocals, I guess. That's all I kind of yeah. have to say about art. I uh, very art, repetitive. It's super generic and pretty simple uh, i mean what do yeah. you think art has good sound mixing i'll say that but it's somehow even w- a little worse than jump because at least jumps a little catchy art is like like lyrically too it's <laughs> the look it, it's a breezy listen don't get me wrong and it has some catchy moments but i think the lyrics are like i can be your piece your art like it's a little in the hammy zone but i, I don't want to sound too harsh but it's a it's a it's what i want to say is it's like a mid song like, I'm, I have no other word to describe it except that it's kind mid. of mid and 5 out of 10. Uh, wow, especially okay. when Tyla's put out some better tracks in this album, I feel like it just doesn't, it doesn't cut it for me anymore, Tyla. I have, I have higher expectations now. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, honestly, if I were to say, if you took out all of my bias and if I had never heard water before, yeah, you know, it art would definitely be fresh. art. No, I was going to say art and jump. Would be my uh-huh. least favorite. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. But yeah. just because I kind of have that little extra spice to it, I'm like, ah, I don't like water. But jumping <laughs> art, art, no good. Yeah. I can say. Uh, I think going on next track, on my body. Rashab, what'd you think? 
Yeah, for me, this one is in the same category as Jump and Arc to an extent. Like the chorus is, I, I in my notes I have it's kind of addictive, but um, you know I don't have a lot of notes. I don't really remember this song a lot. But I, I've written here musically maybe kind of uninteresting or maybe too similar to other tracks. Like Jump Art and On My Body is like the I guess second tier version for me of the set of songs like Water, Truth or Dare, Read Me. Like for me that and even Number One to an extent. That's really the good half of this album. And this yeah. back half is a little more generic. And I think it's songs that almost feel ordered by your record label to an extent. They're not terrible. They're all just kind of middle of the road. Mm. Um, and they feel really deep in that pop space from a structure perspective and not ones that I would really, really repeat a lot. Yeah. Do you have any other additional thoughts? Yeah, I, I think I am um, big agree and disagree on where Jump Art and All My Body... Those are definitely to me this back half. At least this mm-hmm. part of the back half, throwaways. These are the throwaways, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but on my body, it's here is where like the actual like because this has Becky G on it. This is where yes. like, the Spanish comes into the songs. I'm like, oh, I was actually right though. Like it to mm-hmm. me, it sonically worked with the Spanish. Doesn't mm-hmm. mean it was good that it worked because it wasn't that good. Uh, just overall, though, still very generic, pretty boring overall. Uh, definitely yeah. kind of throwaway. Yeah, thanks for addressing the Becky G um, feature. I, I don't know why I missed that in my notes, but uh, did it add anything? Not, I don't think it added as much as Thames added in the previous song. No. I think Becky G was a good feature. I mean, I think, you know, um, her verse was good, and it complements Tyler again. I don't, I don't yeah. want to sound too harsh on this art on my body and jump. They're not terrible songs, but they're a little more generic. And I guess that's where I stand with them. They're not, yeah. they're not going to catch your attention as much. I think maybe of the, of these three, I would say jump is maybe the one I go back to just because it's kind of catchy kind of gets stuck in your head a bit, but nothing, nothing with a lot of meat around the bones. I would just say. Uh, big agree. And, and another agree at, uh, at least for me, definitely the 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 Thames feature was definitely yeah. better. But then going to yeah. the on my body, at least like how vocally the different features like they worked together with Tyla, it didn't. It, they, they were they were just kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it was just I mean it was the same kind of sounding. It's like maybe the song would have been better with Thames. I guess I got <laughs> Spanish, but like it, it was it was just boring and forgettable again you know i think it's safe to say we can move on to the next track we have more priorities we have other priorities oh my god okay <laughs> yeah uh, go ahead Rashad. What, what did you think about priorities because it seems to have you have your priorities straight so i i do have my priority state um for me uh going back to my working theory this is the second of the third ballads okay and, and not a lot of suspense on what the third ballad is at this point right uh, mm-hmm. For you, at least, Mateo, since you're aware of the entire album. Yeah. This is the second of the third ballads. I still feel, you know, maybe this is a little better than Butterflies, but I still feel this is not her forte yet. I think there's possibilities for Tyler to expand as a singer of ballads. But this song still feels a little watered down to me. It lacks, I guess, that extra elevation or sophistication, which I hear from other pop artists singing similar ballads. So... Maybe better than butterflies, but for me, still not quite there yet. Yeah, um, that's all I have to say. I, I think it's interesting. I guess I didn't super get that this one was a ballad. I know the other one you're talking about, but we'll discuss mm-hmm. it when we get to it. I didn't super get that the ballad part for priorities. Um, okay. Maybe with yeah. I, I did, you know, I, I did listen and I did hear that there was kind of like wavy vocals, which I actually thought was nice in priorities. But I, I didn't super get the ballad sense. Uh, overall, the song I thought it had good production, okay. and surprisingly, I kind of liked that. Like the last thirty seconds, the where it kind of had the oh oh and the, the, the no lyrics right at the end. Kind of like okay. that. Maybe that's where you're getting the ballad sense, and especially kind of maybe the choppiness, and the waviness yeah. of the song. Um, but wait, to be clear, you, you said you liked priorities better than butterflies. I think no. a little bit, maybe a smidge more. Uh, still not a lot more, maybe a, I, a little bit more. It still feels watered down. This 
it's not up to par, I think, with some of her other tracks. Sorry, you're saying something. No, no, I, I, I guess I just kind of disagree. I, I think Butterflies was better, but I, okay. I definitely think compared to the last three, four songs we heard, it was de- parties is definitely like better than I think it's the middle, at least mid, I could say, of of what Tyla has put out. You know, I, did, okay. I don't think it's that bad. Okay. But okay. Kind of is what it is. You know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, going on to the thirteenth track, two last. Let's go to the last track, Mateo. Let's go to the two is last. Track. Is, this, is this even the last track? It, not really. There is one more. <laughs> no, it's the not. There is one more. We have a remix at the end. But um, I have a lot to say about two last. I'd like to start if I can, Mateo. Unless yeah, go ahead. This is the third ballot in my book. Okay, at least mm-hmm. according to my notes. I'm sure, of course, our millions of listeners and you might disagree, Matteo, but for me, this this set is like the three ballads. And I feel that this is probably the best one. It's definitely one of the most experimental tracks on this album, I think apart from maybe uh, On and On. This one goes sonically in really interesting places. There's a lot of electronic production here. It's musically dynamic. Mm-hmm. It's personal the lyrics are personal but they feel situated in the right space um musically for tyla i think this is where she's kind of getting more confident with how to write a ballad and finding a good sound to set her lyrics to so for me i actually really enjoy i think this is one i would probably revisit just to kind of get more of a sense of what opportunities she might have as an artist moving forward if she were to continue in this space of writing slower more personal songs i like this one Ted, do you have thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, I do actually have a fair amount of thoughts. Um, I, I thought I, I get what you're saying. This is definitely more of a ballad. This and butterflies. I still don't really see priorities as one. Okay. Uh, I definitely did like two last uh, uh, as the best of the ballads because it's also I would say I guess my favorite track of the album. Uh, I thought it had pretty good. I was gonna say. <laughs> Yeah, so I was listening had, to this and just thinking you would like this one. Yep. Yeah, it had re- pretty good production. Um, I, I, I agree. Big agree on I, I feel like I can really hear her range. But it's weird to say, yeah. even with her, it's not whispers, because that's not the right word. But yeah. she's just not she's not belting out sure. in, yeah. in this track. But I still yeah. feel like I can hear her. And it was actually kind of good. Um, I, I really liked the instrumental break, you yeah. know, in this song. Um, I don't know if it's bad to say, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't know within myself. This is my favorite just because it had those like instrumental breaks, and so it gave me a literal break mm-hmm. away from Tyla. The rest, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and <laughs> the cringe lyrics that she sometimes has. Yeah, uh, but this is de- this would definitely be my uh, favorite track on the album. Now, I, 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 go mm-hmm. ahead. No, I was just saying I totally respect that. I think this is one of the most developed and complex, musically complex songs um, mm-hmm. on the album. It's most experimental. I really like the way that she, uh, that this track at least plays with the electronic production. It's it's almost, I almost want to say it's obviously not 100%. I would say like 2% in the psychedelic genre, or at least Whoa. touching that genre a bit. Um, okay. I, mean, that's what I'd say. I don't super see the psychedelic part it definitely is like electronic and yeah, okay. even not just in the instrumental break it kind of i feel like it kind of carries that within when she's yeah. you know has her her time to shine in the song uh little definitely sure. sometimes too experimental though right at the end it had like a weird squiggle sound that's the best way i could put it uh, i didn't it was but, weird i didn't like that i like that actually it was, really? it was different yeah I think it was a weird but interesting cap end. I mean, I just, it, it just kind of felt like Tyler breaking free of genre constraints and getting a little different. So for me, it worked. I, um, I don't know. I think the song was different enough already okay. where I didn't need that to kind of cap it at the end. It, to me, that, okay. that part didn't work. And, okay. But, okay. you know, and, and, and I don't want to just say this because obviously I already had said my interlude, but if the, if I didn't, Say on and on. I would weirdly say this song, even though it's the second yeah, last yeah. track. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I, I don't know if I'm only saying that just because it had that kind of the instrumental breaks yep. between her her singing or not. But this would definitely be a runner up for it. 
at least for okay. me. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's a valid argument. I think this this is a good candidate for an interlude for sure. Yeah. But uh, All right. I think it's time we get to to last to the last actual <laughs> song. Oh my God. Let's get wet. It's the water remix. I'm just laughing because this this is look my this is terrible. Okay, this remix is terrible. Water Whoa. is great. But Travis Scott literally saying sweat with wet echo effects on is so pointless, in my whoa, opinion. Whoa. You think Did this you is... like the Travis Scott verse? I, I didn't care for it. Um I I guess it like it like I don't I think we're in a disagreement. I I I was like Really? Wow, I'm actually surprised. I, I thought the Travis part actually kinda worked. But maybe <laughs> I'm just like biased, but I I don't know. Just, just be. I think I'd say that I'm biased that I associate Tyla with cringe now. If I'm being honest, and so, so that's why I say it would kind of. I think his part worked, <laughs> but also even if this was just a Travis Scott song, I wouldn't yeah. go to listen to it. Like if there was no Tyla, I would. This would not be a good song of his. If I'm being gotcha. honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. And I do want to also say this, that I do think it was interesting out of all the different features that Tyla had had mm-hmm. to me, this is the one that the feature Travis had sounded sonically the most different, at least yeah, for me. Yeah. I feel like for the other two, she was more in a little ballad with the yes, other yeah. artists, mm-hmm. you know, really yeah. kind of mixing the vocals together with this one definitely was taking a step away from that, you know? Okay. Yeah, for yeah. me, this feature felt this remix and this feature just felt tacked on. I know it worked for you. I can get that kind of, uh, but uh, yeah, for me, I this is throwaway. Like I, I wouldn't listen to the remix. I guess. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think yeah, it's just not the one I would go to personally. To be fair, I would not listen to it either. Uh, <laughs> but you wouldn't listen to the original or, either. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would not listen to that one either. And uh, right. I, the only real thing say is i guess you might disagree but i feel like maybe this is what tyla needed a little more of 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 a features that sounded different so she can kind of play mm-hmm. off okay. of them instead yeah. of mixing in and kind of being overpowered especially with that that temps feature where i think she was absolutely overpowered for that track gotcha yep yep you know no i i hear you on that that's that's interesting I guess it kind of bleeds into my opinion of the overall album um, in a sense that, well, I was just going to add that I think that this is our first debut album, I think, that we've covered. I mean, obviously, correct us if we're wrong, millions of listeners, but um, well, how do you feel about judging a debut album, Mateo, overall? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Like, think about the fact that this is a first album for an artist who is still up and coming, quite young in her career. Yeah. Any any ideas around that before we even get into our actually Actually, yeah, that, that's, that's a good point you brought up because I'm almost certain this is the only debut album we've covered. Yeah, and and so, that yeah. definitely kind of goes... It's weird because it, it makes me want to not be as harsh. Without spoiling <laughs> my actual album reviews, even though you just heard me go track by track, yeah. it makes me want to not go as harsh. But then I think of that like, oh, she, I guess she's you know won a Grammy and she's definitely mainstream and yeah. people know and love her songs. So it's like, eh. Who cares? I can be as harsh as I want. <laughs> she has the recognition now. Not that I think I should, you know, take her down a step. Sure, sure. Yeah, of course. I, I don't think. Uh, I don't think our uh, influential uh, podcast I, might affect her career. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think uh, me saying anything will affect her at all. If I'm being yeah, honest, yeah. Because all no, I no. can think of is is other artists that we've covered where it wasn't sure it wasn't their debut album. But I'm like, oh, they have not even a tenth of maybe recognition. You sure, know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so yep. it's it, it is, but it isn't. If she did, if if her stuff wasn't already as popular, maybe me, I'm just being contrarian or a yeah, hater yeah. or what. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be a l- less harsh, but I I think I can give my full, honest opinion without feeling any other different way. I mean, I mean, do you take it into consideration at all that it being her debut? Like, how do you feel about that? No, I don't think it. I, I don't think I take it into consideration uh, that much. I, I would just say I think my review for for the album is uh, reflective, I guess, of the fact that this is a person who's just starting her musical career. And I think 
she's got a lot of confidence technically. I think the album's a vibe, in my opinion. You know, even if you find I think even if you find some of the lyrics cringe or some of the songs feel a little off, there's a unique vibe to this. And I think bringing that Afrobeat sound and combining it with uh, that more mainstream pop sound that we know is it's kind of a unique vibe. At the same time, I it's I think you can tell this is an artist who's still discovering her sound a little bit, or at least working on polishing it still. And I think that's clear throughout the entire album um, that there are some songs that are a little underdeveloped, a little watered down. You know, she's working with ballads sometimes. Sometimes she's going back to the you know, mainstream label, pop label type songs. Um, some songs are more on a piano than others. It's a mixed bag at times, but there is. It's both a mixed bag, but at the same time, I feel this cogent vibe into the album, which I think I respect. There's a confidence to it. I think her vocal range is incredible. I think she's really sticking to bringing a certain aesthetic and, and style to her tracks, which I really respect. But I guess I'll take it in a positive sense where I think it's a strong start and there's more to discover with Tyla. Um, and I think that kind of encapsulates how I feel about it. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, not maybe not for that. I think maybe it'd be time to go into the actual album review. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't mind, can I go first? Just because I think yeah. I want you to maybe end this episode a little of a higher note. And because I also, <laughs> also want to play off something you said, where I disagree. I I think I think Tyla has found her sound, and I though I don't mm-hmm. like it, I think yeah. she's confident in it, and not that she can't change. And even yeah. though it is her debut album, I think that's that's her lane that she likes. And I think she's probably going to yeah. stick with it. And sure, she can maybe go down a different different route with mm-hmm. doing more ballads or experimental sure. stuff. But I think she has sure. full confidence and knows what her sound is. And obviously, yeah. it's working. She has so. hits. You know, yeah. super popular song. Mm-hmm. Um, but to get really into the meat of the album review, mm-hmm. I think she does have good vocals. But I don't think this album had full use of them, if I'm being honest. I don't really, like, she never she never really differentiated with that range. She kind of, while okay. there was a That's range, a good point. she didn't, it was almost like a copy and paste of that exact same range. Other than, yes, uh, what was it, To Last, where she actually kind of changed up her, her mm-hmm. how she used her own vocals and the range within it. But overall, yeah. boring, boring, boring as an album. That's, it's disappointing because she had a lot of that, the Afrobeat and the Ama Piano, that influence. Obviously, this is what it is, this genre kind of is. And I think it had to use a lot of interesting instruments and stuff. But really, she only used those. At least I feel like I noticed them in the first couple tracks. And then she, I feel like her vocals tried to kind of overpower that or they were just kind of in a good not a good it was a bad imbalance i feel like because she kind of stepped away okay. from that okay. uh and i hope i'm not crazy but i think overall i really stopped i started noticing that i, I think this album kind of had a really big garage band feel to it i don't know if it was her choice sonically with it but maybe the producers were messing around a little too much or did definitely didn't do enough where i just think it was like oh, what's going on with the, these kind of the mixes and it just seemed a little too simple or maybe, maybe that's the, the style of yeah. the sound and maybe i just don't vibe with it but I, I thought it was too simple being honest um again really this music tyla is really just not for me um zero tracks i would actually come back to uh, i would definitely skip if you're listening <laughs> if i'm being honest i maybe that's too harsh but i don't think i would li- recommend any songs on this album if i'm being honest Cause I, and if you were just pick like I I don't know just pick anything because all the all the sound the songs on this album literally sound the same except for like to last or whatever you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they all kind of just sound the same and I don't know but I'm I'm saying all this and I know I said she's found her sound but to not be too harsh I do think she should she definitely will and I think she should put out more music. But maybe you know branch out of what she's been doing. Try to get a little more experimental. Right. right. Uh, you right. know, don't stay so safe. I locked think that's in. Yeah. Do. She shouldn't be so locked in. She shouldn't be so safe. Because yes, as an artist, she's not bad. 
And I know yeah. she's not for me, but yeah. I think she can she could definitely come out with some really good stuff that maybe vibe with. But I'm yeah. so saying all that out of ten, don't hate me, don't shoot me, Rashab. It was it was, actually was a really tough decision, but I'm giving uh-huh. this a three out of ten. Okay. Okay, so that's that's fine. I, I do want to pose you one question, and this can be kind of the closer for your end, mm-hmm. um, unless you have anything else to add, of course. But I just want to ask you this: Is do you think if now that you've heard this first album, I know you didn't love it, but you kind of got a sense of who she is. Do you hate it enough that if there was a second album, you wouldn't even try checking it out, just to see, like, hey, I, hey, you know, I reviewed it for the podcast the first time. I, I'm curious. Do you have enough curiosity? I guess. Uh, or is that too uh, kind of outweighed by your hate for it? <laughs> or dislike of it? Rashab, Rash- do you want me to be honest? Yeah, be honest. No, I, I wouldn't listen. And and the only I think the only yeah. real way I would actually listen to more of her music is if it was forced upon me by yeah. uh, a Your Choice Octane. for another <laughs> Octane episode or if right. for some reason it's I have to listen to the radio if I'm out. All right, let me take that note. Make play. sure to include that. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that Rashad. don't don't hey you never know um, uh, i guess so yeah <laughs> no i'll, I'll try uh, uh, um, what did you think overall i think i i kind of was mentioning album review earlier but i, I will put it at this you know i'll try to keep it brief um i think this is a confident album to be honest it's, it's musically pretty confident yes there's some dips there's some places where Things don't feel quite right. Um, things feel a little bit watered down. So I think it's a strong start for sure. Is there room for improvement? No, I would think so. You know, I think there's places to go beyond this for sure. I think, and that's where I kind of not don't give her a pass or anything. But I, I, you can tell listening to this album, I think to an extent that this is somebody who is, yes, she's found her sound, but there's something that needs to still be developed here. And for me, I keep coming back to lyrically and structurally. You're absolutely right. There's a similarness to the songs. There's a simplicity. And it's not necessarily a great thing. I think there's opportunity for her, especially I think you mentioned as a vocalist, to really go and explore broader horizons. Um, But as a debut album, I think it's a strong showing. Um, And I think bringing this entire coalition of different genres is interesting. and. I guess it intrigues me. I'll put it at that. Uh, into to seeing what she'll do next. Okay. So, so, so you would definitely follow up is, and listen to another. Yeah, I follow up. At least out of curiosity, definitely. I, I'd be curious. Yeah. I might even revisit some of these tracks if I'm being totally honest. I I do vibe okay. with the album to an extent. Sorry to use a Gen Z term, um, but uh-huh. I would I would definitely <laughs> I would not maybe listen to it regularly, but it would be in, in, an interesting re-listen after this discussion we've had. Uh, for some of these tracks, I'll put it that way. So I guess rating wise, I don't want to go too high. So I'm going to stick with seven. I almost want to go eight, but I'm, I think that's way too high. So I'm going seven. Um, okay. Tyler, by Tyler. I think, yeah, I think eight would have been a fighting. We would have fought Rashab. <laughs> Heavy feeding, yeah. you know, yes, yes, uh, yes. a rating. Uh, I, I can see what you mean by seven, I guess. I, I do want to make it clear. So I don't want to just come across as a hater. This, my three out of ten was a me rating. I can I can see how someone is giving it a five out of ten. I can even see how you give it a seven out of ten. Like I, I get yeah. how people like this music and why people do. It just didn't work for me. And so fair rating. You know? Seven fair out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, fair rating. Yeah, I think so. I feel comfortable with that. And I'm not I'm personally not offended by your three, but I don't know if Tyler's is big enough to have, you know, crazy a fan following yet and a bunch of like you know stan stands for her yet. Yeah, uh, yeah so maybe they'll find this and have a word or two with you but uh, no i, I think uh, i i wasn't expecting anything did i was expecting something more disastrous mateo honestly your rating is low but i feel your review of the album was honestly more open and positive than i expected so i'll, I'll put it that way yeah yeah, I don't know. I try to, you know, try to maybe amp it up, do a little confusion in there. And, and at the end of the day, I just honest. And like, because 3 out of 10, you're like, I, absolutely, the worst album would be a 1 out of 10, obviously. Sure. Right? Yeah. And, but mm-hmm. it's it's just, it, she had good vocals, and she, you know, some of the songs are 
listenable, I guess. And so there's yeah. three to 10. I, and I get why she has listeners. And so that's why yeah. you, you appreciate her on a technical level, but you're on an artist not, level. I get, I get it. it. Yes. You know, but yeah, anything, no, I totally get it. anything else to wrap this all up, Rashab? No, I think, um, I guess my only thought is, you know, it'll be, I'm, I'm, I, it'll be interesting if we ever cover any more debut albums, especially ones that are so, I guess, recent. I mean, this album came out this year, Mateo. This is really fresh yeah. off the press. I think it's probably the most recent album that we reviewed, at least at, at the time of this release, right, for this episode. I so, mean, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it came out yeah, this year. Like, when This year. When actually did it, do you know what month it came out in, or when? I, I almost want to say February or March. It's, like, really close by. Um, well, okay, it's not... It, this uh, This album's barely... A month old yeah it came out yeah, a month old. Hey, and you know what 22nd march yeah <laughs> it's not even a month old yet tomorrow yeah maybe. that's wow. pretty interesting so we we reviewed this on the one month uh release for this one yeah we are that's pretty interesting so it's, it'll be cool i think if we get to do hopefully a good mix of more recent artists here and again i'll try and bring those in and torture mateo a bit more but um uh, <laughs> Okay. It was cool to do this episode. I think it was fun. It was a lengthy and in-depth discussion about an artist I didn't think we would have that much to say about. So, but I think yeah. I'll leave it at that. Definitely a curveball, Rashad. But let's leave it Definitely. at that, and let's go. Uh, let's go on to unknown territories. <laughs> uh, unknown territories for you, but known territories yes. for me. We got my album choice for next episode. I think this will be a good one. Um. It's a 1992. It's a little throwback, kinda. Okay. It's, it's okay. gonna have sounds, the genres of real R and B, is that nice. ambient genre and cool jazz genres. Ooh, I'm intrigued. All right, not a curveball, Rashab. No curveballs here. I ain't doing you. you how you do me, <laughs> um, because I need to fix and soothe all of our ears after listening to this Tyla album. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, in being honest. I just want to put you onto this album because I don't know yeah. if you ever listened to this this band, this artist. Mm-hmm. But my choice is "Love Deluxe" by the band Sade. Oh my sure. god! Yes, I've heard Sade before. You have? I okay. mean, the super famous song, right? Am I mixing this up with someone there, else? There, there are a lot of very famous sage songs I'm, I'm googling it right now it, it's on the tip of my tongue uh, i think maybe you're smooth thinking operator, of, like, of course tattoo. isn't it smooth operator oh i mean well yeah yeah but I think she's another very popular that's just one of the i think many popular songs uh, right 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 no i love out. smooth operator who doesn't but yeah, I'm, yeah this will be really interesting and i think I've heard this band referenced um as an influence for a lot of artists i do like so i'm i'm actually pretty happy with this pick okay Okay, you know what? Change, we're changed Ox Fiends. Maybe Ox Friends now. I, I'm, Ox I'm Friends. Like really, Ox Friends, I'm glad to hear that you're happy. With. I, I, it really wasn't a curveball. And while, yeah, I was kind of joking about, you know, to soothe our ears, fix our ears, because you gave <laughs> this last album 7 out of 10. But I, yeah. I think this, this, this album will take us to a whole different kind of spot that we haven't yeah. been at before and so i think it'll be a really interesting discussion so i'm really yeah, excited. I'm excited yeah i'm excited for that one and i hope you yeah. all guys are too uh, um you know i think uh this is the second in a row hot skins episode of the month so hopefully we get this yeah. next one out to you on time <laughs> hey yeah dude maybe we get uh the next one three weeks in a row can we do that that's uh, uh that's what we're shooting for i guess don't so. make promises we can't keep them Tim. definitely no promises we can't keep but yeah, all right, all right. Rashad. I think it's uh, I think we need to give a good thanks to Craig. Everyone loves knows and loves Craig, so thank you, Craig. Everybody knows and loves Craig. We uh-huh. everyone knows who we're referencing. So everyone, thank you, Craig, as always. Thank you, and thank you all you guys uh, for listening to us. Yap on about music, you know. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>